Hello guys, if you have a long form with many steps and many fields, the question is when do you save the data? Right away from the first step in the database or you use session or maybe save the data in JavaScript somewhere temporarily and make that form as one JavaScript huge component. Let me show you my version of the answer based on flight check-in form, which I already showed in the previous video on this channel. And if you missed that, I will link that in the description below. This is based on the project, demo project, which is on Laravel daily project example section. And now I'm making a series of videos about that project. So topic of today is where to save the data. If you have like hundreds of fields scattered over six steps in our case. So let's start with the first step of the form, which is find the booking by reference and last name and see if we immediately need to save something to the database. So we find the booking and we go to the step two to fill in the passenger information. So by that time, what is in the database? We may find the answer in the check-in controller, which contains all the steps. I was actually debating whether it should be separate controllers with one method or two methods like step one controller, step two controller, and so on. But actually, I decided to move the logic into services instead and leave the controller with a lot of methods, but it's still basically all about one object of check-in. So we have step one to load the form and process step one after we fill in the booking reference and surname. And this is where we see the first thing about check-in. We have session and we have check-in service with a method called create check-in session. Let's see what's inside. Here we have check-in eloquent model and here immediately we save something to the database. So check-in means the process of checking for specific booking ID, which is already in the database. And here we have three important variables, current step and step is enum on the database level, session ID, which we generate unique session ID for that specific check-in. And then from that service, the check-in object is returned. And then we save into the session the ID of that new check-in into the PHP session. And in the database, in the check-ins database table, we have something like this. I refreshed, we have booking ID, but for now seat ID is null. We didn't get to that step. And here are the steps. Passenger info and other options are this. It's an enum on the database level, as I mentioned. And whenever we advance to the next step, we will change the current step and fill in more data about that check-in. Let's advance to other steps and you will see that in action. So we fill in the form. Actually, only two fields were required. Additional date of birth and expiry date. And we continue to seed selection. So we're finished with step two and what is now in the database and in the session. Let's take a look at controller again. So we go to step two, which is just loading the form and then process step two, which is submitting of step two. Here we have check-in taken from the database. The method get check-in or redirect in the same controller, private method. It checks if there is a check-in by session check-in ID in the database. If we find it, it is returned and then we'll work with that check-in specific object. Otherwise, we abort redirect to step one, which means you need to check in from the beginning. So this method is called in all the steps of the controller to get the check-in or to redirect back. So now if we return to process step two method, we get the check-in and then the result of this step is updating of passenger info. And this is a separate database table. So we have check-in passenger info, which is filled at this point. So in the database, check-in is actually a set of tables. It's not one table. It's the main check-in, which is now at the step of passenger info. And then quite a few database tables, as you can see with prefix check-in. So we fill them one by one with the same relationship to check-in ID. So as you can see, the data is saved in the database immediately after every step. It's not in the session, it's not in the cookies, it's not in JavaScript anywhere. You submit the step, the data is saved, and then you move on to next step. Which means that if you get back to this form later, even after a month, for example, the backend database Laravel would identify that you're now on the step three and steps one and two are already completed. If we save that data in the session only, that session would be active only basically for that browser session. 
which may be good in some cases, but in this case for very long form for six steps with many fields. I would personally hate if I accidentally close the browser on step four, for example, and then have to fill it everything from the beginning. So yeah, the method of checking service to update or create passenger info looks like this. It's just saving data in that separate database table. And then we have the method from checking object called advanced to next step. This is in the model of check-in, and this is where we have the list of steps, not only in the enum of database, but also in the model itself. It could be actually an enum separately. It's kind of a personal preference, but since we're working with array sequential by index, so we need to start with step one, two, three, and so on. We advance that current step by doing plus one to the index instead of hard coding the name of the next step. A little bit of flexibility on top of hard coded steps. So yeah, now we are on step three. This is where we deal with pricing and we'll get to pricing, how it is saved exactly and why it is important in a minute. So we choose the seat, we choose some other stuff and we continue to baggage. This is where we complete step three. So we get to the controller method of process step three. And by here, you should see already the patterns. We get check-in from the database. Then we save the data related to that check-in separate table. In this case, it's seating data. So we need to validate it and then process seat selection. For that, we have separate seat service, which is not that relevant in this case, but still I will show it. So we have seat assignment separate database table and we process basically saving the data in that database table, again related to check-in ID. And then in the controller, again at the end of the method, advance to next step. So in this way, step by step, we change the status of our record. We refresh now we are at a baggage current step and by now we have seat ID determined. So step by step, we fill in that check-ins database table with more data. So let me quickly fill in the rest of the steps and this is where we will get to pricing. I'm just randomly filling that in with some stuff, some services on top. I need to fill in the emergency contact name. These are required fields and then continue to review and I will accept the terms and conditions, confirm the stuff, complete check in and that's it. And now let's take a look at the database. If we refresh our record, the step is completed by here. We have completed add field also filled in and then to the right, we have two important fields, price snapshot and pricing breakdown. For that, we need to take a look at the live wire component, which is the last step, the step six for confirmation. In that case, I decided to move that to live wire instead of just front end Alpine. And this will be a topic for next video, Alpine and live wire in this project. But for now, we can treat it as a controller and we can take a look at submit method of that review confirmation live wire component. And here we process the confirmation with these methods. Record final pricing. So we update the price with these values. And also we have separate boarding pass service to generate boarding pass, which is kind of fake in this project, but still process confirmation. We have separate check-in confirmation database table. And as a part of that, database transaction. We also update the check-in database table, our main table with current step completed and when it was completed. So yeah, to answer the original question of where the data is stored at which point, basically we start everything in the database. We have the ID of the check-in on the first step. We save that in the session and then we get that from the session on each step. We check if the record exists in the database. If it does exist, then step by step, we update the same database table and related database tables, which finally leads us to status completed, completed add field filled in, and the final price, which is unchangeable. So for example, if I try to check in again with the same reference and last name, it would go to complete right away and would not show the steps because they are well completed. So that's it for this video about saving the data step by step. In the next video of this series about this flight check-in project, we will talk about pricing and how it is saved in the database, the snapshot of the pricing, including JSON details, and how it is used for reporting later in Filament Admin Panel to provide reports based on the pricing of that day, even if the actual price of services is different. 
So subscribe to the channel to not miss that video. And if you want the full source, the repository, again, it's on Laravel Daily in project example sections, available for premium members of Laravel Daily website. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.